Welcome back. As we were saying, King Misazulu Kauzuelatini is in Richards Bay today attending what is the annual King Itwayo Memorial Lecture. Let's head over to uh, Sipaman Logoge, ENCA senior reporter, uh, who's following this for us. And uh, Sipa, hello to you. So this historic battle, of course, is always, always fascinating to watch, uh, but also the historic, historical significance can never, ever be forgotten. Absolutely. In fact, if I were to say, I would say it is one of the most important events in the calendar of Amazulu as a nation. Every year on the 22nd of January, Amazulu commemorates the Battle of Isandwan. It's the epic historic battle whereby a group of Amabuto, under the leadership of the then King Tejwayo, were able to defeat the colonial invaders who wanted to grab the land. At the center of the Battle of Isandwan, there was mainly one thing and one thing only to defend the land at all costs. Amazulu emerged victorious. So every year on the 22nd of January, they commemorate that they remember the fallen heroes who defended the land. So we are in King Petroyo District Municipality in Umshatuza, Richards Bay today, simply because this is part of the activities as a build-up to the 22nd of January, which is next weekend. So King Petroyo District Municipality for context is where the remains of King Kwayo we intend in Nkandla. Nkandla is one of the municipalities that form part of the King Kwayo district municipality. So King Kwayo's bones lie in this area of King Kwayo. The local municipality, the district was renamed after him. So it's very historic that today the second annual memorial lecture on the life and times of King Kwayo and the battle of Isandrane. Those events are taking place here at King Kachwayo District Municipality. Of course, Amazulu King Mesuzu Rugazwelitini, who is a direct descendant of King Kachwayo, as well as as well as Amazulu Traditional Prime Minister Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi, are in attendance. The program is wrapping out now, or rather, is wrapping up now. It's all about song and dance. Amabuto is in Amabuto and is in Dombi are busy performing traditional song and dance as part of this celebration. But earlier on, there were speeches by Prince Mangosu Chumutelezi who delivered the lecture, but the main address was delivered by King Misuzu Rugazwelitini. Both of them touching on the issue of unity within Amazulu as a nation, but also within the royal family. You would recall that 2023 is said to be the most interesting year in terms of the royal dispute over the throne of Amazulu as a nation. Court cases are said to be heard in various courts across South Africa, starting in Gauteng, uh, I think in March this year, if I'm not mistaken. Those royal family members who do not support King Mesuzulu, they want him dethroned. And those who support Princess Magade, they say he's the one who should take over the throne. Remember, there's been a number of candidates here. You've got some royal family members who call themselves the core members of the royal family who say they are the ones who've got the responsibility to select the next Amazulu king. They nominated Prince Buzabazi as the one who should take over. But today, King Misuzulu saying despite ongoing court battles, he will continue with his royal duties. He says the throne belongs to the nation. It cannot be that even though there are court actions that are underway, that everything stops. Prince also touching on that point to say even though the king is on the throne but there is a wound that was opened by the dispute over the throne. Let's take a listen. The king's ascension to the throne has not been without pain in the royal family itself. Even now there is a case in the high court disputing the irrefutable fact of our king's position. A wound has been opened in the royal family over the succession following the passing of his majesty King Goodwill Zeliki in Gapkabizur. We therefore long to see that wound fully healed. Our king has repeatedly said he would like to see that wound healed. But we must remind ourselves as Zulu people that this is not uncommon in the royal family, in the Zulu nation and in the history of our nation. 
our very founder, King Charles of Akona, died in an act of fratricide. All right, Sefa Manla, let's also then stay for the moment as I begin to say goodbye to you, the Amazulu Prime Minister, talking about the challenges in that particular sound. By challenges, yes, but also support is the other side of this coin. What did he have to say? Absolutely. He pledged allegiance and support to King Misuzu Lugazulichin. And this event today is attended by a number of Amakos from across King Kejuayo district and across Guazulu Natal. And that support can be interpreted in a form of the KwaZulu Natal Provincial House of Traditional Leaders, Chepesin, in Kosi, uh, Ushinga, also being in attendance here. Yeah, the former Chepesin of the KwaZulu Natal Traditional House of Leaders, in Kosi, Triliza, is also present here. Yeah, more Amakosi from across KwaZulu Natal are attending today's event. Amabuto in their numbers and is in Tombi, the maidens in their numbers. So, Prince Mangosu to saying, despite the ongoing legal battles and challenges, the king appears to enjoy support from various sectors of Amazulu as a nation. Let's take a listen. Even while this court case hangs over our head like a sort of Democles, we, your people, know and support you. Like all our kings who came before and created their legacies, our king will create his own legacy, as he is starting today, so that in days to come, he too will be remembered whenever our people gather for his legacy. Since the very founding of the Zulu nation, many efforts have been made to divide the Zulu people, yet they have never been quite succeeded. 